Hey, big shout out. Welcome to everybody for joining us. Uh, season five of the OSP. If you'd have told me in 2020, I'd be rolling season five. This is like episode 163. I got all the boys here today. Um, my apologies for not doing the live show on Saturday. Although I can't really apologize for that. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure what that was. Uh, we had we had an unexpected um, uh, passing in my family, but a uh, big shout out to my mom, man. She was she was one of the best. That's T. Sis, his grandma. Everybody on here knew her at some point in time. They either met her, hung out with her, or something. So uh, she was one of a kind, and I mean it. She got to live ninety seven years, mm. ninety seven big ones. But uh, wow. hey. Listen, uh, I never thought for a second I'd still be doing this in 2024, but here I am. Um, been a lot of revisions, a lot of changes. There are gaps along the way where, you know, things happen. Uh, but I feel like I finally settled into a good place with you guys, myself, um, the crew right there, Rasheen, t Noobs, uh, you know, Mikey, um, Schmitty when he makes it. Uh, K Watt for being part of the show there for a, for a minute. Like we've had some good people helping us out along the way. Uh, I couldn't have done this without you guys. And, and you know, I want to I want to say I I appreciate you. Um, I want to appreciate the networks we are currently on. We're on Let's Talk Sports Network, which was the the first network we were on. We're on Sideline Sports Network, uh, Manning Media, uh, out of here in Frederick, and they pump us out all over the place. In our newest network that we've joined up with. Uh, which has us on Roku TV on Tuesday nights from 9 to 10, is Elite Sports and Entertainment Network. Um, they've been a, a real fun network to work with. I also do some stuff personally with with what's called um, uh, uh, South Florida Tribune, where I do a Monday night 108 Stitches baseball talk with those guys. So that's pretty fun. Um, you can find our show anywhere you listen to podcasts, you guys, uh, on all the aforementioned places uh, all those networks, you can find us on there. And like I said, we're on YouTube, and we have that Tuesday night show now from 9 to 10 on Roku TV under Elite Sports and Entertainment Network. Um, our web page is really, really improved. I've done some great things on there. I got my wife helping out with that. Um, our social media presence is slowly growing. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, check us out on TikTok and on Reels. We are putting out a daily uh, draft prospect preview. So we each got a couple of guys that we're, we're giving you a quick one over size, weight, school, year in school, what they're bringing positive and negative and who might draft them and where. So check that out. Um, if you don't follow us, you need to subscribe to us. We bring a lot of good stuff to the, to the table without these guys, without you guys out there, we wouldn't exist. So please, uh, get on board and help us Help us to push our presence even more. We work hard at this, everybody, believe it or not. Um, we're well over 10,000, maybe 12,000 downloads, just audio alone, which is pretty good from my perspective. Uh, and you can also email us anytime at Original Sports Podcast at Gmail for more information. Um, now on with the show, you guys. Do uh, it. How's everybody doing today? Coach Noobs, how you doing? How was your spring break? I know I haven't seen you for a minute. Man, I had fun hanging out with T Sizz and, and the Poolsville crowd. We uh we went to Europe, did a European vacation. Mm. And uh Chevy Chase. Yeah, yeah there man. it is. There it is, pretty kids. Cool. There it is. <laughs> That's good though. Hey, going to Europe with T Sizz, he's the master of that trip. Uh he's the one who got me the bug. Uh there's no question about it. Chops, what what was you up to over those uh few weeks off? Well, with different cause I was just chilling, doing my thing, chilling up like a dead roach, you know, just relax or whatever have you. <laughs> but real, real quick, Mark, you know, again, prayers to you and your family. But with your mom, my relationship was sort of different because my it was technically my aunt, but it was more like my grandmother. She was 21 years. My mom's senior. She was more yeah. like my grandmother. She lived at the end of the block where Mark's mom lived. So every day going to school in elementary we had to walk by at the time we called it mar day not knowing we were pronouncing the name wrong so it's me and my brother we walk by she talked to us every day talking to us you learned this you learned today what you do today you learned school bobby mikey what do you do whatever have you and i always walked in front of my brother and every day 
your mom would say, Michael, wait up for your younger brother. Wait up for your younger brother. We were, at this point, real quick, 14, 15 years old. We're the local, you know, guys at the field. We call it the field. We're umping baseball games. My mom still tells this story. She said, you're umping a game. I'm walking out, and Bobby's behind me, and your mother tells my mother, it's like they're back in elementary school. Every day, Michael walks in front, Bobby walks behind them. And it's like, I mean, it goes back to, so when you let me know she was passed, I was like, man, that goes back to, I mean, childhood. I mean, it was, that was, but again, my prayers to you, man, but I'm, I'm glad to have you back, man. You take the time you need to get your head right because moms can't replace her. Can't, yep. can't do it. Can't 100%. Do it. Man, Sis, it. Yep. Sis, what, what's up with you? I know you've had a whole lot, of, you know, I know you've had a whole rack of stuff going on and then you yeah. got to deal with Max. Yeah, and the damn dog keeps barking. Sorry about that. That 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 was that was uh Max's watchdog in case any girls come by, but uh he he's all right. Uh family's back in town ready to get this thing rolling. I'm excited to season five get it started, man. Yeah. Gene, I see you got the four one two on. Yes, always, baby. Four one two. I, I like that shirt. I like the Pittsburgh donut like that. That's that looks tight. No question about it. Do you have a good good three weeks off, sis? I mean, uh Sheen. Yes, good three weeks. I had spring break, of course. Montgomery County and Frederick counties are different, so it makes it hard for us to plan Wake anything. Yeah, yeah, we can't really go anywhere, but uh, we did some cleaning. I'm about to get some my deck done, my bathroom's done. Um, watch the Pirates, believe it or not. I haven't watched the Pirates in years, but yeah. Seven and two, baby. I'm yeah. trying to follow them a little bit today while we're doing the show. We'll see what happens. They tried, to lose, they tried to lose yesterday, but uh, Sheen, did you get those Christmas trees down yet? You got like 10 in the house, right? <laughs> That's been done. Down. Jeez. Down. <laughs> been down. <laughs> Ten Christmas trees. Hey, you know, I, I just tell you guys, you know, I was Christmas. fortunate enough. I was fortunate enough to go overseas too. I was in Greece, but I, I pulled out before you guys rolled in. Young runs at 11 day trip. I only can go nine because I can't take it after nine days. Um, Oof. if you ain't never been if you ain't never been to Greece, I recommend it. Okay. But We'll You'll see. be surprised we were... by Athens. Listen, Athens is a beautiful city and it's clean, but there is spray paint everywhere. The only place it's not is like the Acropolis and places like that. But there is spray paint. They tag everything. I'm surprised yeah. they didn't tag me walking down the street. I mean, it's I, I, I put a spray on the sides. But see, we were in Italy longer, so we had more wine to drink. That's why we had to do 11 days. Okay. It, was, it was hard dragging new about a bed. I get him at eleven o'clock. Come on down. I'm tired. I understand. That's all right. Oh gosh. Every Every night. Night. Hey, Rick Ross says you got to go to Santorini, Greece. Is that true? Is that where you are? Anyone? Rick Ross Anyone? was he in WrestleMania. No, Rick Ross, the rapper, fool. <laughs> That's what he said, Santorini, Greece. That's what he said. Yeah, yeah that's that's, that's the one with like the blue building, the white domes, the the nice sand. Yeah, that's that's beautiful, but okay. we've never been there. Okay, that must yeah. be where the. But those are the I ones. Mean, yeah, exactly. With all the pictures that you see, I'm gonna roll back to where you were this year, next year, young. I'm 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 taking my squad to to Italy. I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully, I have the same the same tour director. She was spectacular to work with, and yeah, pleasant on the eye, and the kids. She were, was on the ball. Yeah, I, I'll tell you what. The kids listen to her because. She just was very carefree. She wanted us to have fun, but she was very carefree, and that made it that made it good. So um, let's get into this a little bit, you guys. Let, let's start talking some sports. The first one I want to talk about, Bronny James. That boy lives in a fucking delusional word, y'all. <laughs> he is so delusional. I sent you his numbers. He, what do he average? 4.8 points a game at USC? Yeah. yeah. He's transferring out. There's Dan. Hey. His he numbers are better than his, wasn't what we thought it was. His numbers yeah, are better than his, here. his numbers are better than his dad's. And so, tell him why, Sheen. Tell him why. <laughs> hey, here's here's the, here's the bad part. Here's the bad part about it, fellas. Is Mark said he is delusional, but are we worse for talking about this dude? Right. I mean, you know what I mean? Because on the one hand, you're right. It, it could be a story, but it's only a story because of who his dad is. Right. And right. to be honest with you, let's keep it a buck. It should be more of a story because it's like, okay, you would have grown up around the best camps, had the best professors, of, as I say, the guys to coach and teach and whatever it is. Yep. Yeah. 
and you're terrible. I mean, yeah. terrible. Now, again, we don't know how much of his health is still an issue. I mean, they're letting him play, so you would assume, hey, you're all – Yeah, he had that heart issue last year, right? Yeah, yeah. but again, I, I – I, are you kidding me? What do you even consider going to pro? That Come maybe, on, bro. Well, maybe it skipped him because, you know, the little brother is very good. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Brother. I mean, Michael Jordan had a son and he stunk too. So, I mean, you're right, but they didn't give him as much press. Walter well, yeah. Payton had a son that played and he played at a high level. Not he, well, he played top D1 school, yeah. but they weren't getting, he, he played there. He wasn't, yeah, 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 yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, Barry, yeah. Sa- Barry Sims, Barry Sims, Barry Sanders had a son who played at a high level, whatever, but they didn't give him that much praise. Is they're making everything brawny, 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 brawny. His dad comes to a game. It's just, that's got to be yeah. hard, too. Living off that legacy, it's got to be hard. You're absolutely right. But here's the thing. Mike, imagine your daughters in a couple more years living off your legacy down there awake. <laughs> no. There's no legacy. <laughs> and I hate to say it, but Arch Manning, Kinda, is, Arch Manning is, did it. You know, his his whole t- family is royalty and a quarterback. He was – you know what I mean? He – when I say he did it, he has not had all the stories. And, yeah, it's got to be hard for any sports athlete, I would think, coming up in their dad's shoes, but there are some guys that you know you're stepping in dad's shoes and dad has done this, mom has done that. The pressure's on you. If you choose to continue to take it, that's on you. So I'm yeah. saying, you know, Bronny, I know the pressure is on you, but you want to continue to release this stories. I'm going here, I'm going there. Just make I, your move and do it. Don't put it out there. Don't I just I, don't I just know. don't think I just don't think he has it, guys. I mean Gilbert he Arenas' doesn't. son is great. Um, you know who's very good? I don't know if you guys remember Eric Dampier. He has a yeah. son. Yeah, Dampier. Junior. Yeah. It's I think he's in like eighth grade. He's like six he, eight. He's, no, he's, he's not even in eighth grade. He's twelve years old. Oh, okay. Oh, well, he's I something. saw I saw he videos and stuff in him. He's like yeah, he's like <laughs> six, 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 eight. Yeah. He's, he's very so- good. You, you got to feel like uh, these kids, they've been spoiled their entire lives, too. Like, they've been given so many special treatments and, the, you know, this and that. And they, you don't have to do this. You don't have to do that. They've lived in a privileged world. What would lead you to believe that they actually had to work for anything? Like, so their work ethic, for most part, is going to be pretty screwed up, I would think. A lot of these kids just living down the street from Potomac, Maryland, where we see all kinds of kids that they don't really thrive because they don't have to. They don't. They don't have to work for it. Yeah. So, I it's don't know. I think it catches that, up. Yeah. Yeah, I think that plays a part in it. Myself. I mean, you I saying mean, that, Mike? Like, I mean, I don't even think he was really that good in high school, was he? Didn't like it took to his senior year for him to be like somewhat of the man. He but he, is he really a Division One prospect even his senior year in high school? He might be a D two guy. What about hey. eight ten? Maybe about the Atlantic ten. He could the Mac. I mean, yeah. Some, well, they yeah. they said he might. They, I don't know. It's just Duquesne. a rumor. I keep Duquesne. hearing Duquesne in Pittsburgh. I was like, okay, because one of LeBron's the LeBron's old coach stepped down from there, but one yes. of LeBron's old teammates is the is the head True. coach in making. And you know True. what? And, and, and I'm I'm sort of feeling what you're saying, noobs. But I associate that with families that have money in certain small towns, or not many small towns, but certain areas where my son can do whatever because dad donates to the program. But on the one hand, I'd like to say with these athletes, if your father has reached the pinnacle of his sport, okay, in itty bitty league, you're giving this and he's just going to start his dad's whatever his get. But, but once you get to high school and definitely in college, we all know sports is the equalizer. If you can't play, even if the coaches want to give you preferential treatment because of mom and dad, all the cats on the court with you, all the cats on the field with you know, you're garbage. And, you know and what I mean? say, say you're, real talk, seriously. Yeah, you're, you're right. Say you're, you're applying for a job. People want to vouch for you, but they know that yeah, you got some things going on. But how are they going to put their name on the line? They don't. He's just saying, yeah, I, he's he's the best, but numbers don't prove it. And, so that, I, that's and now I'd like to know because you have to think. Even LeBron, I'm not being you know, on. I hate to say this, and I can get booed on. I'm not a huge LeBron fan. I'm just. I'm, I'm just not a not. LeBron fan at all. He's killing I'm, my Lakers. I'm just not. But to be at 40 years old. To, I guess even still play because I hate to say it at a high level because they don't play defense anymore. But you would have to think he does. He works hard. He has the best treatment, whatever have you. So you'd have to think that his son knows you have to work hard. And if Bronny has been working hard and this is what he's getting, bro, you ain't got it. Wait, you so ain't he's got in the, it. He's in the portal, right? Team. He's in the portal, right? Yeah. That's what, yeah. So is this different? Like women, women's they have to they have to commit. 
like as soon as their season's done, right? Yeah. Right away. What's going on? Where's he? He doesn't have to come. No, it, it can, no, it can drag on because Pitt's still they're still, you know, uh, looking for some transfer guy. It can drag well, I'm on. It's different. Is it different for men versus women? Oh. I would think they have the same window. Well, here's the th- I don't know, but here's the thing. Why is the M- the women's NBA draft is what next week or two weeks? Or two weeks? Or- it's early. The women's NBA draft. That's because her season's in the summer. Ah, I got you. I got you. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, let's move on from Brawny, y'all. Yeah, Seriously, please. let's talk Caitlin Clark. Let's talk Angel Reese. Let's talk women's basketball tournament versus men's basketball tournament. First of all, Caitlin Clark gets her just due. Because she earned it, okay? Angel Reese is legit. I'm not going to take that away from Angel. But she plays She plays two parts, in my opinion. You know, she wants to be this badass, come out with her little crown, do her little thing. And then she loses, and she's like, I'm getting death threats, and I've got all this going on. You know what? I ain't got time for that. You're either, you're either evil or you're good. Pick a side. Okay, pick a like side. That. I like and, that. And, I, and, I, and I will say this. Mm, I think evil. the women's tournament has been much more legit to watch, much more fundamentally sound, much more intense. The competitive level of these women has been much better than watching the men's tournament. And I know Chop's going to hit me hard. Mm. 40, minutes, 40 minutes, we got we got the championship game. 40 Listen, minutes. As far as those two go, one's a shooter, one is Steph Curry, and one is Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah, I mean, you can't really compare them. I mean, um, did you I hear that Shaq said she's the best best athlete to ever come out of LSU? Well, that's just Shaq being Shaq. Come on, yeah, that was stupid. Know, everybody, gets, everybody gets caught yeah. in the moment, you know. Everybody yeah, yeah, yeah. Gets caught in the moment. He forgot about Pistol Pete. <laughs> he forgot about himself. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> my thing with Caitlin Clark is, which to me seems to get overlooked, and I loved it at least when her father was in the stands and you saw him told her, "Shut up." We've seen Caitlin Clark disrespect her opponents, and it gets no flat. We've seen it yep. flat out. Yep. To me, I had no problem with Angel Reese wearing her crown because you won the championship. But you've got to know. You've earned that the right to wear the championship You in the crown. You can rock that every day. But you know as soon as you – there's people waiting for you to lose. So as soon as you lose, you got to realize all this praise you wanted to wear the crown – as soon as it gets knocked off, you're gonna have haters. You can't cry about it. You know what I mean? No. So that that's that's my thing. And I, I feel her on the aspect of regardless of how we can make the semantics, this, that, and whatever. When Caitlin Clark did this, no issue. When Reese did it a week later, there was an issue. When she went to her, I'm the man, that was an issue. When Caitlin Clark waved off and opponent. Wait, hold up. Is there something I need to know about her? When she said I'm the man? Oh, I don't well, you know what I'm doing. The pronoun thing, bro, you throw me off. <laughs> when she's like, we got to read, that, you know, that caught flack. But when Caitlin Clark went like that to her opponent, how she ain't going to shoot, you know, and that was disrespectful. No, nothing ever got said. They both have I like that. The, the goods. About, and again, but here's the thing. If you're going to, I just don't get why we so have why never, was it dismissed? Why was that dismissed then? Well, that's what I'm saying. You tell me, why is it Caitlin Clark, her father is so far, her dad, the only one, when they caught him saying, just shut up, he is the only one you've ever seen. I respected ever. him for that. Exactly. And you're the only one that has ever had a problem with how she talks to the ref, how she disrespects her opponents. That came from her father. That speaks volumes because nobody in the media has ever said anything about it. When Angel Reese caught mad flack from even the media about what she did. That's my problem. That that That's my problem with it. You know what I mean? But like I said, and, and Mark, when you said the men and women's tournament, man, there are certain games where I was geeked to watch the women's tournament. I would admit I, I still watch more of the men's tournament, but there were some games. If But if you looked at game for game, LSU-Iowa, Iowa and UConn, UConn. North, NC State and – for you at uh, South Carolina. Carolina. Those are the games I wanted to see most. I watch well, more than the games, but those are the games I wanted to see most. Do you think we'd be talking about Paige with a Booker? Is that how you Becker. say her last name? Becker. Buker? Becker. 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 Do you think we'd be talking about her if if she wouldn't have got hurt and, and you know wouldn't have been able to play would have been able to play the last couple of years instead of Caitlin Clark? But she is very, very good. And she was legit when she came to the table after 
after they lost and they talked about that foul and everything, she said, a yeah. game doesn't come down to one foul. It's just, and you know what? I kind of respect that because think about it, guys. You lose a football game. It doesn't come down to one call. It doesn't come down to one play. It doesn't come down to one missed tackle. That's highlighted because it's the end of whatever. But it doesn't come down to that. And, and I really respected her for that. Yeah. And, and, and that's what you're supposed to say. But to me, in sports, it can come down to one player, one call it sometimes. But I, I love the way that you did it. But also, I'll be honest with you, fellas. Somebody's, I, somebody's chopping it up with their microphone. Everybody okay? Yeah, I think. Is it a little wind? Is that wind? Here, here, here's the thing. You're good now, whoever that was. <laughs> she won. Who's breaking in wind? Becker, Booker, how you, but again, how you, from UConn. She won player of the year, what, a year ago, two years ago? Yeah, two years I just ago. don't think they didn't put her on this. I did not see her on the TV screen as much this year as I saw Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese. You know what yeah. I mean? And as players, as good as USC is, I know a couple of their players because I've seen the games, but I don't even think they get highlighted much. It came Gigi down to Walker's eight. legit. Yeah, 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 yeah. It came down to me, Good though. Play. If I think the media could have done better if even promoting more girls hoops, if they'd have put more camera and vision on UConn's team this year and Becker, however you pronounce her name, because she is legit. Well, Speaking of media, uh, in a lot of cities, you need to get rid of these old guys, especially like in Pittsburgh. They got Dulac, Mike White. You don't have anyone who's hip. You know what I mean? What, what, what are you starting a conversation off with? You know what I mean? Like, hey. Uh, it's always negative. Know. But you know what, <laughs> I mean, Rasheed? Like, and, 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 and just going with that, and, and noobs, you could probably chime in from a D.C. perspective, though, on this. I feel like when I listen to Pittsburgh Sports Talk Radio, these guys are always really negative about the Pittsburgh teams. I never really hear a optimistic point of view, no matter what the sport is. And there's only a couple of teams, or only a couple of stations in Pittsburgh. What do you got? 1067 a fan here in DC, noobs. Tell me about that a little bit. I don't think they're super negative. I think I think it's been positive. Um, I mean, you consider how bad the teams are here, too. I mean, you, you have the Wizards, there's not much to talk about. The Nationals. Um, I mean, the defenders are pretty exciting, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> but and then Washington, I think everyone's just excited about new ownership with Washington. But but I think they're positive overall. And then and then the, the broadcast guys are older, also. The, you know, I think that they're they're kind of moving on with the Sonny Jurgensons. God, please, <laughs> you know, please get him. Yeah, they're going with the younger crowd. I think they're starting to move in that direction. So I hear what you're saying, That's though, Gene. It's kind of frustrating to listen to old guys. Just, you can't really connect with them. That's part of the um, – and, and I'm going to get us – I'm going to move into the UFL next, but part of the problem with the Baseball Hall of Fame is the fact that they got dudes that are like 78 years old, 90 years old, voting on guys getting in the Hall of Fame, and they're still grudging Pete Rose because he told them to go fuck off at some point throughout the course of their career. You see what he said? What, you know, and, and that's said, not right. He said, I, I, I guess I should have had a translator. <laughs> yeah, that was good. We're going to get to Otani. I promise you we're getting to that bitch. I real, promise real, real you. Quick. And, and I only I can only speak for Mark. I don't to, about Mark. I don't know how far much you guys follow baseball, but I remember Mark deep into baseball since we've been kids. Yeah. So when you talk about the old writers, what is it with these unwritten rules in baseball that these old writers are hating and not voting guys into the Hall of Fame or I, I don't get that. What is what is up with these unwritten rules? Like if you hit a dinger, you can't flick the batter. Even if you sort of flick it, that's showing up the the pitcher. Well, throw a strike. Don't throw. You know what I mean? What, what is up with the? I, I hate these unwritten rules in baseball. That, <laughs> that's that's I do. I'll tell you what. I, that's the one thing I do love most about football. They have transitioned to the modern day athlete. Now, sometimes it's a little over the top. We all know that. Give you that. But they've transitioned to the modern day athlete, and, and I'm okay with that. I don't care about your. Tw uh, 10 guys standing there and one dude who scores a touchdown rolling a football and knocked it over to bowling pins. That doesn't bother me. You know what I'm saying? I, you got to go forward with your sport if you want to get better at your sport. Uh, uh, the guy, I'm drawing a blank on his name right now because I've been drinking some peanut butter whiskey. But let me just tell you, the guy who is uh, the commissioner of baseball right now is stepping down. I believe it's either 2026 or 2029, one of the two. And the guy who is the architect of the Boston – Red Sox a few years back, Theo Epstein, Epstein will become the new commissioner. 
So wow. he will bring in a whole wow. new, different way of approaching baseball. Manfred. I'm hoping. Manfred, I'm hoping. yeah. Because he he's got he a winning team up there with the Red him. Sox. You know, hey, Mike, Mike dropped the UFL, guys. Hey, you guys watched any games? I, I watched the first game. I've been busy today, though, catching up. I, I like the football, man. I, I do. I, I like some of the rule changes. Yeah. I like you can go for three points yeah. on the extra point to keep it real. Like, yeah. And you know what? Obviously, the NFL is liking it because they've adopted a few of their rules already. Yeah, I mean, I mean, my impression of it is you can see it's like, uh, I guess, second tier because McCarron can throw all up and down the field. Like he drives him all the way down, but all the whole game he was doing whatever he wanted. I mean, he looked fantastic. I'm like, this this dude's been in the NFL. Then they said who it was, and I was like, oh, he was in the NFL. Yeah. He couldn't cut it. So he was in the NFL last year too. You remember he got signed by Cincinnati when they lost two quarterbacks. Ah, there you go. Yes, he went back there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Noobs, what do you think of our defenders? Hey y'all, if you're if you're listening to this before Noobs actually talks, we are going to take our show on our show on the road. We will be at the Defenders game doing our show pregame on uh, April 28th, somewhere outside, having some cold beverages. Um, I'm gonna bring my son to make hot dogs on the grill or something, but we're gonna have some fun that day. But Noobs, the Defenders. Man, that, that last year they were fun to watch. They they made it. Uh, what well, they go all the way to the championship. Championship. They lost. Yeah, yeah, but they made it there, and I think uh, with the combination of the two leagues, it should be a fun product. It's I love seeing the the change of rules, the kickoff return that the NFL is going to adopt is was uh, really thinking outside the box. And um, if you think about it, it, it really does eliminate a lot of the high speed collisions that occur. So yeah, um, I think they're innovative. It's fun to watch. Um, it's a good product, you know. Yeah, it's great. Yep, I agree. Okay, Chops, so, you're a football guy. Oh, man. First off, I'm going to get away from the way everybody else is hitting it. If I'm looking at the UFL, USFL, Canadian League, every football, the European, every league that has been, none of them have really caught on here in the United States, right? Like, whatever have you. I don't understand why NFL players don't see this. Because I say that because they hold a lot more power and could demand better contracts and more money because we as Americans, if we don't get NFL football, we're not supporting anything else. Yeah. If you see, I've been watching last week's games and this week's games, there are empty seats everywhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everywhere. And I'm like, but, but and, and real quick, Jake Bates, how is he not on a roster somewhere? 64 yarder last week, 62. Cause I was watching some of the game this week, 62 or 63 this week. You can't tell me that man can't kick, fellas. I find it hard to believe that man can't. I don't know. I, I just – and real, also, Matt Coral is now in uh, – he's he's in the UFL. Wow. He came out – he was drafted, what, third round by the Panthers. To me, they haven't been able to get right with a quarterback in, what, three, four seasons. Then he went to New England for about three weeks. It wasn't even – he didn't do – it wasn't even really season. And I'm saying that New England had defensive guys running the offense. Carolina couldn't get their quarterback situation right. Had, did Coro even have a real shot? Because no, he, he was only there. He was only there a year. I, that's right. what I'm saying. I mean, and I wonder how many of these guys just didn't get in the right situation. Which, you know what I'm saying? But I, I do like it. And this, so far, this looks like a step above. Yeah. Any USFL. Any XFL we had seen, I'm I'm liking what I'm seeing, fellas. I I, I am I'm like it's I'm widely not funded by the NFL. The NFL went to those guys and they said, "You need to mix XFL and USFL. We'd like to see you do this, this, and this. We'd like for you to try out this type of rule. We'd like for you to do this." It's quietly being done because they want to adopt it as kind of like their feeder league. Does the Rock still own it? Is he still part the of the Rock it? is part is, is one of the yeah. owners. Yeah, so you, got the XFL, last week it up. you got the XFL merged with the USFL. It's an eight team league now, but they're still like under those divisions of X and US. Yeah, make it the UF. It, uh, and it makes you know it makes it makes sense that they're doing this finally pushing forward. I would expect them to only be eight teams next year, but I would not be surprised. If they had 10, I think it'll be slow growth. I think they'll look at attendance. I think they'll look at attendance where they have the teams. And if it's a football city, 
D.C. is a football city. There's no question in my mind. Caps could win 10 cups. D.C. will be a football city, whether they're winning and losing. You know, um, I, I do like it. I Like I said, I watched the first D.C. Defender game. I enjoyed it. I knew a lot of the players who were being mentioned, you know, and I, I mean, like, I, I just had, didn't have the time today, but I would have watched it. Like, I'm making it part of what I watch sports-wise on the weekends. So, um, did, did anybody else watch any of the games today? Did anybody else see any of the game today? I was busy as shit. I'm still oh. getting caught up on WrestleMania 40, brother. What? That, <laughs> hey, real, hey. Real, real, real quick. Hey. The – Mich- uh, I wanted. I think it was Mich- the Michigan. I want to say it was Michigan, but whoever, I, Coral, Matt Coral, and Adrian Martinez. No, they're in the Stan Peters, I believe. However, they're both quarterbacks, and their quarterback is literally running. One gets one or two series, and the other one gets one or two series. I know in the NFL that is frowned upon. I know this talent isn't exactly NFL per se, NFL, but fellas. I think we may start seeing this in a lot more teams only because Martinez can both throw and run. Now, he runs better than Coral, but he can actually throw and run, not like a Taysom Hill who can only run. But I think if you start getting more quarterbacks that can do and are more versatile with the run and pass almost equally, this – and if you're – Mark, right, Mark, to where the NFL is funding this, the NFL wants to see this and that or whatever, see what they can adopt in their league, what was accepted – this might be something we see take off for a while. I I, I think it very right. That well, Martinez really. kid, he played for Nebraska. Am I correct? Kansas yes. State. Can't uh, know, Kansas State. He started out in Nebraska and went to Kansas You're right. State. You're right. I'm talking Kansas State where I thought he shined. It is so it, he's yeah. a little bit older. He's probably yeah. 25, 26. 25, 26. 25, yeah, 26. but right. he is legit. I will say he's a fun – he was fun to watch in college. I enjoyed him definitely. Yeah. Hey, what do you think of the guys up in the box calling the plays, and you get to hear them call it? That's awesome. That's, That's awesome. Cool. How many more championships would the Patriots have won if they would have heard that shit? <laughs> Still got to defend it, baby. Yeah. Hey, I know I sent you a picture of these boys right here. Yeah. yeah, this is the future of boxing right here. They're telling us to watch these five guys. These five guys are. Kermel Moten, Abdul Maison, Emiliano Vargas, Bruce Carrington, and Andy Cruz. Chops, what do you know about these five guys? Honestly, since They're all before you would put that up, I didn't know anything about them. I, I didn't know anything about them. <laughs> However, try to look on some film, whatever have you. have seen a couple of them, and they're smaller guys, which I always used to be in the heavyweights, but I do like the smaller guys now. Of course, with the young, they all, all have raw speed. They've all got talent. I'm interested to see – now, what I want to do is start studying more and being honest with you because I want to pick out one or two of them that I really want to start watching after a few more fights and see where they go because whether it was in wrestling, greco Roman style, and or MMA, there's always guys I find that I, I look at to see how they progress. But now that you hit me to those guys, I'm down. I want to see where they go and how they look. Who has a I'm, – I'm, I'm interested. I'm glad you, you, you sent that to me. And I hey, wish, you talk about I, wrestling. Noobs, not she. Young and I are going to MCW next week at the what is it? The Elks Club. In Frederick. Elks. <laughs> We're gonna go see some professional wrestling at the Frederick Elks next Saturday night, baby. Yeah, I'm gonna have to keep Young under wraps though. I might There's be like on forty it. bucks. We're two rows back from the ring. I'll be tempted. Oh, I know you will. What the I hell? You will. Is it real? But, we're going to do some live clips from there. You can't say it's real. Of course it's real. Okay. Yeah, right. you know. When they come off that top rope, you know that's legit, brother. You know that's legit. Hey, that's I sent you guys a nice picture, and that picture looked just like this. And some asshat told me, this is – this right here, y'all. Can you see that okay? Oh, there. Yeah. Sheen got it for me. Thank you, Shane. Um, it says that those guys are the goats of their sport. Floyd Mayweather in boxing. Is he the GOAT or is it all league? No. No. No, no Floyd Mayweather no. ain't the GOAT. He dances no. until a guy wears himself down, then he hits him and knocks him out. How about <laughs> – I love this one because he ain't even in my top five GOATs. No. LeBron, LeBum. I love it, noobs. I got a new one for there too. Uh, LeBum James. Is he the GOAT? Mm, I wouldn't know. I mean, listen – for, I mean, it's going to vary, but yeah, I mean, you know, people are going to say different things, even with Floyd, but um, 
Not for me, no. I'm I'm a Jordan guy, of course. No, yeah, yeah. Jordan guy for me too. Anybody else Jordan. not a Jordan guy? So who are you a guy of? Jordan. Yeah, Mark. Okay. Yeah, I'm a Jordan guy. Yeah, I no question about it. I don't care how much trash they talk on Jordan. I know what I saw Jordan do. Game in, game out for years and years. And he only did it for what, 10, 12 years? Yeah. You know, the ball has played either. 20 years. Six of six. What, how many uh, how many defensive MVPs has Braun won? Uh, not one. Exactly. That's a four letter. That's a four letter word to him. That's yeah. Just, just yeah. That's a four letter word to him. And I liked it because of LeBron. Excuse me. With Jordan, he let it be known after he lost. Who was it? To the Celtics, he had to get tougher. He had to get into the gym. He wasn't. I need to go and form. A, a bigger squad and go out and look for that, you know what I mean. So yeah, I, I like Jordan's my guy. Jordan, you're Testons. right, the yeah. They beat tap, him tap, up. Beat, tap tap beat tap. Him up. tap tap tap. Beat him up. Yeah, I'm I'm good with that. I'm good with that. Hey, shout out to Daniel Berry, sports highlights nice for joining us today. Big shout out to our guy Schmitty. I know he's working today. Hold down the firehouse. Well, we want to come out there and do a little thing at that firehouse at some point, Schmitty. We'll have to yeah, get that I'm trying to go. I'm trying to get on the back Jordan of one of them cars looked. and put out a fire. I swing that hose around. <laughs> hey, listen, Schmitty's on point right there too. Look, Jordan never lost. Oh, fine. Yeah, that's what I said. He's six yeah. and six. Six, Jordan never six, lost six. six. Here's my guy, the reliever, Michael Gott. What's my going on, God. Mike? Thanks for joining us today. Appreciate hearing from you. Uh, special shout out to a couple of my buddies who, who I got to see this weekend. Uh, not the greatest circumstances, but my boy Sammy Trishlin, Ed Pivison. Um, appreciate seeing you guys. My boy Terry up there, my nephew, he saw uh, uh, his guy, Mike Danka, and uh, what, Justin? Justin and Mark, yep. Yeah, so it was nice. It was nice being back home, running into some people, so shout out to them. Hey, the next guy they have up there is Brady. They're saying Brady's the all-time GOAT in football. Where are we at with that? Quarterback <sighs> or all – yeah. No, they're saying all right. all-time great in football. Can you have – one guy being all time great in football. Answer no, me that. Riddle me that. Me. Not football. Not to me. Not but if we're saying, if, if, if we're saying the face of the football goats in football, I would, I, even though I hate, I don't, I don't want to even say I hate him. Uh, I would have to say, yeah. I mean, if you're putting, if you're saying, hey, here's the goats, but here's the face of the goats. Hey, hey, noobs, you're a football guy, man. You're you're a defensive guy, though. Straight up, I know noobs is a defensive guy. Played linebacker Wake Forest. He still coached defense. He's a defensive minded person. Who's the goat in football on the defensive side of the ball? Uh, you gotta go either LT or Reggie White. Yeah. Do I have I'll, to I'll lean towards Reggie White because I know Reggie. Oh, White I was thinking LT. Team. I was going LT before New said LT. I was going LT. I yeah. respect you guys for that, but I just know, I just know Reggie. He was he was talking That's to the good cost. Lord before he hit the field. LT was hitting the white powder. Um, the white horse. Reggie yeah, had, Reggie had a long career. <laughs> if you want to ride, ride the white <laughs> horse. I love that song. Hey, I'm not paying. is Mays really the goat of baseball? Will not to Mays? me. Junior. Junior. Catch, yeah. Junior. Ken Griffey Jr. That's my guy. Oh, I like hey, GJ. Y'all Pure like swing. Oh, oh beautiful. Beautiful. So, he, here's the thing. He's he's got got like I got a goat in baseball. Because you, you all know I'm a Babe Ruth fan, and you've already called me on the carpet about that. But he did amazing things when there was no live balls, and and they were using, you know, they were grabbing a piece of a tree and whittling it down to play. But, and I get, and, and Barbara, I get you. But here's the thing: but when you look at Griffey Jr., of all the guys we hear, like the home run hitters could do this, do that. There's things coming out. He was dirty. He took this. He took that. We never heard anything about that with Griffey. Even when no, the I agree. Were, even when the pitchers were, you know what I mean. I agree. But here's the thing: imagine if he had taken anything, what he could have done. Yeah, Man, stayed, but I, I do. I, skinny. I like Griffey. I like Griff. Hey, noob, did you play baseball? Yeah, up until uh, high school. And then I did track and field for football, but man. This is a tough argument. I, I like Babe Ruth too, Mark, just because he pitched. He was such a proficient hitter, and he, and he pitched. I mean, and he was an elite pitcher for a while there. We probably didn't yeah. bet on the games either, huh? Okay, so let let let's. Use, I know I gave you another one about Otani. Can can he be part of the discussion anymore? Otani? Yeah. 
He's the best right now. Right now, he's the best. Today, Today he's the best. I don't, give a damn, I don't oh. care about none of that. I don't care about none of that. Pure athleticism. You're saying He's on the, the baseball field, right pure athleticism. He is the best player. Yes, right now. and that's what I'm. That's what I go everything uh, with. Athleticism, okay. Otani, yeah. you have, fellas. Because think about this real quick with Otani. He can hit anything that's thrown at him because he's he's hitting he's hitting bombers. Yep. But also he can strike cats out. That to me, you can't get better than that. You know what I'm saying? A couple years mm-hmm. before he's striking anybody out. Hey, I, true. the reliever got it right here. I agree Monk with that 100. percent For me to have goats in each decade rather than all time, yeah, you, right. you're 100 percent right there. Yeah. I, I agree with you. Difficult to say with difference of sport in each decade in comparison. You're 100. percent You're right on point. No doubt about it, Michael. Um, let's just do a couple more though. Hey, how about this one though? Seriously, Usain Bolt, track and field. Mm-hmm. No, not to me. Not to me. I'm taking Flojo. I'm taking Flojo, and I I wasn't much of a. And I like Carl Lewis. I I like, but really I like Flojo. I'm not gonna lie, but I like I like Carl Lewis. Just man, I heard not he hung my, out with Dwight Howard after his career. Yo, that, about that Carl Lewis. Now. Carl, Carl Lewis was so diverse. He ran the hundred and long jump. He jumped. Yeah. And and whereas Usain Bolt, I mean, he just. Is a hundred, two hundred guy ran. I mean, it's there's a lot more to the long jump. That's pretty impressive. I yeah. I agree. Carl Lewis is was on another level. And again, it kind of goes back to what Michael just said with the ar- the argument of uh, decades. You know, right. in his time, right. Carl Lewis was un- untouchable. So, right. and I all bullshit aside, do we think that Bruce Jenner was like in terms of Olympics during his time? You have to. Yeah. I mean, yeah. uh, uh, yeah. 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 you got you got, you got ten events. You can't discredit what he did. No, ten no, events. Can't. Ooh, Schmitty, look, or Schmitty, that's or there, or whatever you want. Wow. Look what Schmitty just said. That's a hell of an athlete. I mean, a hell of a uh, a comment, Statement. Schmitty. Statement. Ooh. Yeah. Statement. Yeah. Ooh. He got I mean, greatest Bell? athlete, athlete, Schmitty, athlete. Y'all agree with that? No, we had a discussion no. to a certain Listen, when you I say do. Smitty, listen, when you say athlete, you got to be able to do more than one thing at a high level. All I know he could do is backstroke. He can, he can swim, do more yeah. than backstroke, my man. Yeah, I'm sure he can't beat. Honestly, right. fellas, I'm gonna keep it 100. If we went the greatest athlete, athlete we're of all time, hit, we're hit to me, that's talking like Otani that can pitch and hit. Because as much as hold on, big dog, hold on. And when I say this, because much as I love Jordan basketball, when he went to baseball, he was barely on the Mendoza line. So I need someone I've seen do two things at a high level. That's what I'm, you know what I'm saying? So when you're ho, 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 ho. So, so we're going off, we off on this one now. How you, you, you forgot Bo and Dion. Like they both play major league sports. No, no, no. I'm feeling you, but I was talking about like today, right now. That what I'm, oh, that's what okay. was making my correlation. You but guys no, are on the same page. Forget, Brian Jordan did it too. Brian Jordan did it too. Yeah. Yes, he did. Yep. You yep, know yep, what I'm yep, saying? Yep, yep. So yep. that would be my, that would be someone who can do, Two sports from all things at a high level. Yeah, you know that's my. Yes, that's what I said. I was using Otani. I apologize if I didn't word it right. I was using Otani as my bench stick of what I mean as an athlete. Hey, Michael got it right there though. Yo, your favorite player of all time in each sport is probably a little bit more aligned with than the best player of all time in each sport. Because if you look at this. If you look at the rest of this list, you know, Messi, is he the greatest soccer player? Well, somebody's going to tell you it's Pele. You know, MMA, they're saying George St. Pierre. Well, somebody's going to tell you, what's his name? Um, Hoist Gracie. You know, like, I mean, there are different dudes. Track uh, tennis, Serena Williams. Somebody might tell you it was, you know, Billie Jean King. Who knows? Uh, hockey, I, I, I think this is undisputed, guys. It's without question. Hockey. Without question, you huh? know, and, and I love Larry. I, I hear you, Sheen. Go ahead, make your case. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not even gonna go with Lemieux. I'm gonna go. Harvey's with, not uh, even on this list, though. Oh, no, I mean, is. I see. Okay. It. I mean, you could keep Gretzky, but of course, Gretzky had a team of all pros Stars. already on his team. Yeah. You know what I mean? He never played with Magoo. Lemieux played with Magoo. Anybody yeah. know Magoo? Yeah. Mister Magoo. So you might. You might know Magoo. Yeah. No, the real Magoo. There was a Magoo that played on the Penguins. Yeah. He stunk. But yeah. okay. Hey, he made look, he made Warren Young, who was an AHL player, a 50 goal scorer. He made Warren Young. And, and you Sorry, know what? I met school. Warren Young. Warren Young, I met you, Warren Young. And Warren Young told me that face to face. Lemieux made me who I was. He put my <laughs> name on the map. 
<laughs> a lot of people say, but a lot of people also say that dude from uh, Detroit. Bobby, uh, no. Um, or Isaac Moore. Or Isaac Moore. Isaac Moore. Isaac Moore. Isaac Moore. Isaac The older guys. Oh, Gordy Howe. Wow. Yeah. Gordy Howe. Whoa, Shane. He was a tough son of a bitch. He don't like old guys. Hey, noobs, before we go on from this, though, <laughs> where where do you see – where do you see Ovechkin as a DC guy? Where do you see Ovechkin as Ooh. a top ten, a top ten all around great player? Where do you see him? Even I, better, ho ho! I'm sorry to cut you off, Noob. Even no, better, okay. is he on your? Would he be on your Mount Everest of of DC? Mount DC? Rushmore. Mount Rushmore. I'm sorry. Mount of Everest. All time. <laughs> yeah, I think I, <laughs> it's gonna explode. <laughs> do, <laughs> do, I, Would you try to see him? Uh, <laughs> no, DC. Yeah, I'd say t- top four all time. He's got to be right. There's, no, okay. I mean, I think yeah. so. And and then hockey wise, I'd say he's probably top ten. I've seen him cherry pick so many times, and yeah. he doesn't really play defense. Yeah. Um. He, he's not a complete oh, he player you. anymore. He will check you. That, that's <laughs> he's, he's not anymore. anymore. He won't. He anymore. used to. Oh, he, 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 oh, okay. he loved oh, uh, coming across the middle and crushing guys. He's, he's, he's he, don't, hell. he don't do that anymore. I mean, I, I I respect the sh- I respect the shit out of his goal scoring game. I do. I think mm-hmm. he's one. Of, he he's the modern day version of Brett Hall, in my opinion. But he's a cut above where Brett Hall was. Okay, but he's not an all around player, and he never yep. was an all around player. And people who want to go to bat for him and say he's better than Crosby, you obviously have not watched Sidney Crosby play hockey. That guy just scored 40 goals at 36 years old. And he's going to have close to 100 points at 36 years old. And he single-handedly has put a team on his back and got them in a playoff contention at 36 years old. So That's that's what, back to Shane's point, that's like what Lemieux did, bringing those players along with him. Thank you, Sheen. We're moving on to the NBA All Star Game real quick. We're going to touch on this. He they want to do. Color. Damn. I kind of like this too. American All Stars versus international All Stars. I think they should do this in every sport. To be honest with you, to make it interesting. And the other thing I think they should do with it is keep your teams' jerseys and uniforms on. Uh, you don't need to go ahead and make me some crazy ass uniform for a guy. I, I don't need that. They used okay. to do that. Yeah. Just wear your home or away. Right. Huh. Yeah, just wear your yeah, I mean, like yeah. other jersey or your white jersey. Yeah, yeah. You know that's all about money, there, fellas. But do you like this idea? Because I think the international team would blow the blow the national team right the fuck out I the think, water. I, I think it's something different. I think it's cool. I think it'd be fun. Yeah. They got to try something like, because the 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 game this year, everyone hated. It was just terrible. Yeah, so I mean, it's always really, just, are they going to play defense or not? Well, they're not going to play defense at some point. It knew that's what I was thinking. Who has the better shooters? Because you're gonna oh, have yeah. Steph, you're gonna have KD, but you will have uh, Yoko, Luka. and you will have Luka. I don't know, man. I'd watch. I mean, I don't watch much of the. All-Star I actually game would right watch now. that. I actually would watch that. I'd watch that if they did that in the NHL too. Maybe one year. Oh, NHL, they have like yeah. five guys on them. America. So in the NHL, I would do American and Canadian against international. Okay. Yeah, okay. that's how I, I would North, do it. North America, yeah, North America versus, versus international. Yeah. Hey, I love this. I love this right here. Uh, Michael got he hit us with my favorite hockey player was Ty Domi. My man, you must be a fighter because <laughs> Ty Domi was legit. He was like five foot three, but he'd fight anybody. He didn't give a shit about anything. Yeah. Uh, Milk all. all right, let's do this. Let's talk about a combined guy here. Jared McCain signed a, a deal with uh uh Selly Hansen uh beauty products because my man paints his fingernails. Is that the only reason why? Yeah. Your feelings yes. on that. You good with it? What? Like, you, where are you hey, at with it? Hey, hey, hey. We've had to B-100. go. B100. As, as Chop says, B100. Give us a Lionel, Listen, Lionel Richie said it best. People can be what they want to be. Okay. He said here, but, here, but, but see, here's the problem with this. Hey, you and say I'm, me. I'm, I'm trying to keep it, and I'm not going to get into it because I want to keep politically correct, what have you, whatever have you. People say that on the surface. They say that on the surface. And you can say people can say what they, be what they want to be and people can have opinions. If person A says they agree with Jared McCain, cool, cool. Person B says they don't like it, person B is catching flack. So the same people that say, let people be what they want to be, let people say what they want to say, as long as you agree with that. 
as long as you agree with that, you're allowed, they're allowed to say what they want to say. Look here. And so I'm like, yo, do what you want to do, just like me. I'm a big hey. dude. I'm over three bills. If I go to the beach and no. I wear a speedo, I'm subject to ridicule. If you I put my big ass in a speedo, speedo, I'm subject to ridicule. You yeah, have all the beach space you want. No one's bailing on it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm a firm believer in that. I want to, yo, you can wear whatever you want to wear. If I want to paint Listen. half my face green, I can do that. <laughs> but if somebody says it. I look like a clown, I got to be able to realize that and take that. But that's not where we're living nowadays. You can do whatever you want as long as everyone agrees with it. More and more people are going. doing it. More and more people are doing it. You got your Caleb Williams. You got all these guys come out. So what? They paint their nails. Okay. So how about the eccentrics? You got in the in the music industry, you know, Kurt Cobain, uh, Eddie Vedder. The, these guys paint their nails. Why aren't they getting the flack that these, these sports guys do? Well, first of all, different times. And there's also a different – stigma like you look at some of right. the musicians you missing mentioned musicians there were musicians that came out and everybody knew where they were gay or whatever have you but that's still not really ready in, in a lot of locker rooms that's why a lot of players don't come out until after now on that aspect if you're gay to me i don't care what you do on that aspect it really doesn't matter Can you ball? that to me it doesn't matter Can you, ball? you know what i mean but again if you want to paint your nails you can do that if you want if i don't agree with it i don't see why I have to be ridiculed. If you want to paint, we see people that are ticked off at the way other people paint their houses. And sometimes in these HOAs, they get ticked off. To me, if you want to paint your house green, paint your house green. No, no, that affects me. Well, he can paint it. I, I just don't get it, fellas. I, my thing is you can do whatever you want, but just realize not everyone is going to like it. That That's all I'm saying. That's now, you can't, we've lost the focus in America, though. And I'm going there, Sheen. Um, but I just want to I, I want to chime in with my two cents here. I have to because I'm the one who put that on there. I, I'm OK with whatever you want to do. I mean, I have plenty of boys that come into my classroom, whether they're students or hang out at lunchtime or I just talk to them, I mentor them, whatever. But do that shit today. And, and that's fine. OK, that's fine. But at the end of the day. You better understand that as you go into the real world, that there are people who are going to have a side eye on it and maybe not accept you and your opportunities will be different. If you think about it, we're talking about guys who, who are marquee guys. Jared McCain's a marquee guy. He plays for North Carolina. He's a good basketball player, might make the pros, who knows, at the end of the day. And that's when you say real world. That ain't the real world. No, it's not. And that that's all I'm saying. Like, I don't care. I, I'm with you, Chops. I don't give a shit what you do. I really don't. You know what? I don't. Now, if it's Vincent and it happens in my house, we might have a conversation. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you. But, hey, let's get into uh, – uh, before we go there, we got to talk. We got to talk. We got to talk what the Bears are doing with this young man at quarterback. Oh, Caleb Williams. sorry. We got it. We, we got to chop that up. Real I just quick. thought he was part of the, I just thought he was part of the fingernail comp conversation. No, because it's so much deeper with him. I just feel like it's so much deeper with Caleb Williams. I'm going straight to noob on this too. The guy was in the guy was in a magazine wearing a dress. He had a pink phone, pink fingernails, lipstick on. <laughs> you know, the guy cried to his mother after he lost a football game. Oh, I mean, he had fingernails painted in a, in a, in another game is this guy mike i'm not i'm not questioning his athletic ability okay i'm not i, I really am not and i don't know his character well enough to question that i'm character i'm questioning is he well enough to go into the nfl and take the beating mentally and physically i, I was gonna say i'm questioning his mental toughness yeah that's where i'm yeah. at exactly and sis and you got to uh, – all right, like, why do you do that stuff? It's like draw attention, like, to yourself and and to stand out from your teammates. Like, it's it, – we were always taught growing up, like, you're part of the team, you know, look like you're – don't don't pull yourself – don't separate yourself from your teammates. And I, I feel like he, it's a deliberate attempt to kind of be above everybody else and be special. Like, let your play speak for you, and, and you don't need to do all those extra things. Listen, if he wants to do it, I have seriously I have no problem. I just wouldn't I wouldn't ever do it and I wouldn't want my son or my daughter to draw attention to themselves away from the team. Like if they were in a team sport, right. the, your your teammates come first and the team is the number one thing. Is it is it the rock star status though? You know what I mean? Uh, listen, cuz I mean, you guys there's there's rappers that you guys probably don't know who wear dresses 
who do their nails, who wear, uh, you know, who do different types of things. And it's, it's, is it the rock star status thing that they're doing? I mean, that's back in the day, Bon Jovi, bon Jovi and those guys, they had the teased hair and tight jeans. Listen, they was don't don't tell me they wasn't getting all the women. <laughs> don't tell me that, <laughs> because that's a fact. But that's that's not about what he just said. Is a team sport. You got the individual putting themselves yeah. on blast or yeah. whatever. He, I'm his mental toughness saying I want to go home and cuddle my dog or cat or whatever and jump in the stands crying with his mom. I want a guy who I can rally around, win or lose, and say they got my back and shit. We're going to do it the next week and, and let's buck up and just you know plow forward. I don't, I don't, I don't have uh, confidence in the guys to uh, get the guys together and say, "Let's game plan. We got, we got to move forward." Well, here, real quick, it, replying to God's com- comment, my well, first of all, I see that of course the color bearing Jackie Robinson is significantly different than what we're doing with this. Yeah. But, and I, but I'm filling him on inclusion. My thing is the way Caleb Williams is dressing. I look at him as crazy as. When LeBron wore that suit that had shorts to it two or three years ago, that what are you doing? That that just a crazy ass looking outfit. But even in basketball, we're seeing a lot of these men, and I understand. Like I told you, I've been saying it for a while. I'm the old man. Get off my lawn. These a lot of these guys look like they broke. They they were playing dress up in their mother's closet, wearing dresses, wearing. Yo, yo Russell Westbrook was good for it, fellas. Wearing just, I mean, good for it. So, How about Cam Newton? Yes, seriously. So. That to me, but I don't look now. Of, of all the things Caleb Williams has done and he's dressed, what bothered me the most is when he lost that game and he said, "I want to go cuddle my dogs." Yeah, that, after that was after he jumped up in the stands and was covered up by his mother's newspaper. Yes, it wasn't. It wasn't. Oh, I'm so ticked. I want to run right. it back. I'm so ticked. I want to get in there and watch film to get better. He wanted to go cuddle with his dog. Hey, Schmidty's got. The- uh, sorry, Chop. Smitty's got two great comments here. Number one, he hasn't earned a damn thing yet. Not a thing. With the okay. NIL, you don't he, have he won to. The Heisman. He, exactly. Yeah. I mean, not even he won that, Heisman. Like, like Chop said, he, he has earned a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, he won the Heisman two you know, what? Two years ago. Where was yeah. he last year? He, he didn't win shit at the highest level. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the but other we, thing is, when you come to work, bring your lunch bell, earn your status, go win a Super Bowl. You know, everybody wow. keeps talking about how he's got a better arm than Mahomes. Guess what? Mahomes won, what, three Super Bowls now? Yeah. yeah okay, yeah. he's at 27. Let's take it back to Brady saying to okay. go to the – go to the. Don't, don't even go there with me with this Caleb Williams kid. I said it before, and, and my friend JJ and I went back and forth about this on, on our Facebook page. But until this kid actually does something and proves himself to me – which I will apologize if he does. I think he's going to flop in the NFL because I don't think the guy has the mental toughness that you need in the mm. NFL. Mm. The truth, That's baby. Me. That's me. Truth. Okay? I'm legit with what I'm saying here. Hey, uh, Sheen popped this up for us. 2024 head coaching rankings. He said number. It says number one, Andy Reid. Number two, Sean McVay. Number three, Kyle Shanahan. Number four, John Harbaugh. Number five, Mike Tomlin. Number six, Jim Harbaugh. Uh, number seven, Matt Lafleur. Number eight, Sean Payton. Number nine, Dan Campbell. And number ten, Mike McDaniel. Hey, I want Who you to think about split? something before we go anywhere, noobs. Listen to this shit, McVay. <laughs> <laughs> Shanahan, Lafleur, and McDaniel. Where they all coach together? Hell to the Redskins. Hell to the Redskins. H-T-R. Okay. Okay. Can we just who, say, this list? who, who would you oh, make? Who would Maryland. you of those ten? Who would you put in the top five? Because I don't. I think definitely have Andy Reid. Andy Reid. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. Who made the list? Is how is Sean Payton? Get on the list ahead of Dan Campbell. How's Sean Jim Payton? Harbaugh on the list? He isn't coaching the NFL. He he coach the game yet. How many years? You go, Andy Reid. I'll give you that. Andy Reid, I'll give you. Yeah. I would have. I do like. I, and I'll admit, I do like Shanahan high up there. It, I think it was. Picked, I, I think it was dirty p- poker the way he did Wilkes after they lost. Blame the defense when there was p- plays he blew even on offense. And I'm putting Dan Campbell high up there. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. Done work even without. 
yeah. Rodgers. His team went far. Yeah. So I and I put Dan Campbell. So I'm going Reed. Remember, this yeah, is 2024 coaching tree. Yes, uh, I'm going coaching Reed. Rankings, I'm sorry. I'm going Reed. You still got to give Shanahan his props, regardless of what he did after the season. He's still up. He's still the guy. I like Dan Campbell. I understand they they went to the NFC Championship game, and his stubbornness to me is what lost it for him because he did two multiple games. He did the same stupid shit. You have Lafleur. I got to give Lafleur up there. I, I got to put Lafleur up there. You know what I mean? So listen, I'm putting D'Amico Ryan's in there before Jim Harbaugh. Yeah. Oh, without question. Right. Even though it was his first year, they kicked ass. Yeah, yep. without question. And, and seriously, like God said, like, dude, we've seen that. We have literally seen the Lions take steps under the two or three, two or three yes. years or whatever it was under. You've seen significant strides. Hey, I'm so, going to throw a little wrench into the works here, too. Who was the dude down in Atlanta? The heck Al- Smith? Who? Arch Smith. Smith. When is Smith that they? Arthur Smith. Arch Smith in Atlanta? Yeah, yeah he's, he, he, kept them in the running with, he kept them in a running with some shit, some shit on the field. He didn't even really have a quarterback. And he kept them in the running till the very well, now end. He, but he's gone. They, they hired Raheem Morris. He's yeah, with, which is fine. Part. Which is fine. But I, you know, like like I'm looking at guys from this year, and Peyton is not a guy on there. I agree with you guys. Dan Campbell goes up in my top five. John Harbaugh has Lamar Jackson. That's his chip right there. He should, as he's long as Jackson's healthy, healthy yeah. that's his chip. Him he should Tom always had... be a top five yeah. guy. Always. You know, um, Jim Harbaugh, throw him the hell out. Like, he's gone. I don't even want to talk but about him. But it's just like this to give everything else no, 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 no. Yeah. How, yeah. how? He hasn't coached the game yet. Who made it? Who made it? I know. Let's go to his house and jump him. <laughs> hey, one of the funniest things I saw lately was uh, a quote I sent you guys where, yeah, we're going to go back to that sheen, but the quote by – two quotes here. The the quote by, by Ryan Clark that if he saw Derrick Henry coming down the hole, he would have no problem sticking his nose up in there and tackling him. Um, I believe he would do that. I would love to see that happen because I think Ryan Clark was tough as shit. He was. Um, I don't know – I don't know if Derrick Henry will be able to take on Ryan Clark, though. And I know y'all are going to think I'm crazy. Everybody listening think I'm crazy. But you know what? I don't see Derrick. I, I watch that one guy. Who's that backup linebacker the Steelers had? Splain. He, yeah, Bobby Splane. He stuck his ass in a hole and popped Derrick Henry. Yeah. He They're not playing Derrick like Henry it. at the goal line. They're not playing like it now, but Clark – was still playing for the Steelers when there was a different mindset there. And he's damn right. He would have put his head yeah. in. It. He'd have had to. How are you going to go back to the locker room with those cats that he played with and miss that tackle and not stick your head in there? You're yeah. damn right he'd have done it. Well, hey, how mean, about this yeah. dumb shit? Noobs, you'll love this one. Michael Irvin said, Dak is the closest thing to Tom Brady. He has the ability and leadership that Tom had. What the hell has Dak won? Okay, f- f- go ahead, Mike. Go ahead, noobs. Go ahead, noobs. No, I Mike Mike Orman. I, I think he was Irvin coming was back to the club. Hi, relapse. <laughs> yeah, he was high. Mike Orman be hanging out with LT again. He had a relapse. What the? He, this is bullshit. That is the most ridiculous. You know, I, I just feel like Dak because he's a cowboy gets way more praise than he deserves. That maybe it's just me. I don't know, but. That dude, he gets way too much praise. Shane popped this up for us, this picture that, that I sent you guys. Uh, my buddy, Michael Shark. What's up, Shark? Um, this is my yearly cycle with the current Penn State football program. Noobs, you can feel this one because you and I talk about it all the time. They start out the year. Everybody's hype. Yeah, Penn State. Then they lose the big games. They go to the Boulevard of Broken Dreams. Because they lost two games against Ohio, you know, they lose to Ohio State, Michigan. Then it's back to the cycle. We're gonna be great next year. You watch. What, I mean, what are they missing? Why? Why do they keep losing? You tell me, ones? noobs. You know Franklin. I'm not <laughs> saying you personally, but you know, we we know what he's about, right? Yeah. It it's it's. I don't know why they just can't compete with the with the two big ones. They they, they yeah. bring in the talent though. They, they get they get nah, the talent. Nah, well, see the thing with that is, and, and I keep when we keep this whole four star, five star. That some of these kids, yes, you can see it. Like the, the the video you sent today, you can see it. 
some of these kids, they're they're just not, you know, four and five. They're not five star kids. They're not four star kids. Yeah, they're not. I mean, how are you still losing every year? Every year, yeah. every year. Hey, look, Ohio I'll State, bet you Michigan any money that, five stars. I'll bet you any money that uh, he could sell you. So, uh, Franklin could sell you some lakefront property out in Arizona. Somewhere in Phoenix, he can sell you. He some has to. Property. He, he he has to. And, but, for him. but and it's also like when they're going into Michigan and Ohio State weeks, do they have the mindset? It's are they following the coach rather mindset? We're gonna play tough. We know we're gonna end up losing, but let's go play Ooh. tough. You know what I mean? Because is every year you're like you're hype, you're you're geeked for Penn State, and at the end you're like, damn, they should have won that. This, you know what I mean? And I I don't know. I don't know what it is with Franklin. I I don't know, and I know when you're talking about JJ. I know if you ever, Mark, if you ever talk about JJ, which is as you were talking earlier, you and him go back and forth. Man, he 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 loves Penn State, and that's exactly the cycle he goes through. Exactly the cycle. I don't know is what it, it is. Uh, I, I think I I think Ohio State has has better talent overall. If you look like oh, their yeah. their wide receivers, the last five ten years have been amazing. Yeah. Um, and it seems like Penn State's never had an elite quarterback. Yes. Yeah, I was going to say that too. They got a guy to right, manage. There it is. They got a guy to manage the game, but not win it. Right. Yeah, there it I is. Was, Kerry Collins, the last. Okay, then, fellas, why? Okay, real quick, and you just why is that? And when I say why is that, how or what is Frank? What is Franklin not saying, or what is going on that you can't even get a star, high flying five star quarterback to come there, even in a transfer portal? What, what because. Well, he, I, defense, well, I think they're bang, putting all their money on defense. Well, not only that, I just think because but there's, not a pay, they, there's, not a, there's not a payroll. You know what well, I mean? Heard, heard, yeah, yeah. This, I goes, this goes with this. Like, a no one wants to. They can't compete with the the Michigan and Ohio State. So, as a quarterback in this in this day and age, you know, kids are going to the best team. They're not going to say, "Well, I'm going to be the one to go to Penn State and kick their ass and kick Michigan's ass." They don't want to do that. They're not going to do it. But here's the thing, real talk, is we all know, and just like we said, they're lacking that QB. You mean to tell me is Franklin and everything that Happy Valley brings, you can't go in and tell a kid you're what we're missing. You are what we're missing to get us over the hump. You still get to play the Penn State, the Michigans, the Ohio States. You still have that chance to be it. You're what we're missing to be in the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? I don't get like a recruiting kid. issue. I, I, yeah, I, I think they're lacking the offensive clout. Like, I think if you're a, a top ten quarterback, right, you're gonna go, you're gonna go to a conference where you're gonna be. Able, or first of all, you're play for an offensive coordinator who throws the damn ball a ton, yeah. and right. you're gonna go to a conference where you're gonna have success. Yep. You right. Know? I was yeah. at that Michigan game, and they didn't throw the ball downfield. But you're, you're right. You're, but you're, think about it. The Big Ten. When you got Michigan, go Michigan or Ohio State. Are we in agree agreement? The Big Ten, Big Twenty Five, and the SEC are the top two top conferences now in football. Would we yeah. agree on that? Yeah, yeah. And and and, and I'm feeling you, noobs, because they don't pass. But my, for the love of hey, Seuss, you don't think coaches lie to recruits every day to get them in? Mm. Franklin can't come up with a good enough lie to get one. One. Well, here's the interesting thing about Franklin, Mikey, and I know you don't know this, but I know noobs knows this. And T. Siz knows this. He hangs his hat on being a quarterback coach. He will tell you, or at least he used to tell you 10, 15 years ago, that he coached Brett Favre and he coached Freeman, who played at Kansas State. And he got them to where they are. Like, that's what he hung his hat on. Yeah. When he went to Maryland, you know, I was the quarterback coach there, and this is what we achieved. And, you know, like that's what – and that's what makes it even more interesting that he can't get a quarterback over the top to lead that team to the national championship. Do you, do you think Franklin's a yes man in the aspect of some of his assistant coaches or some of the other people want to try to go for the big guys or the guys with the, the, the phenomenal arm? And Franklin's turning it down. I just don't understand how you – you're Penn State. Not one year you can't get that guy. Oh, man, we got the guy. We got him. Yeah. Last year the Jets at least had Rodgers. It didn't turn out the way they wanted, but they had him in the building. Franklin can't even get that guy in the building. Penn State loves this kid that's there now. That's all they care about. They think this kid that's there now that's coming back this year. I'm drawing a blank on his name currently. I'm sorry. I know you're talking about Drew, Al Drew Alar. Drew yeah, Alar. Alar. Yeah, they think yeah. he's going to be great. He's going to be a quarterback at the next level. Okay. Was, was he the Ohio State Player of the Year? The state of Ohio. The Ohio State Player of the Year. Yeah. Hey, 
Smitty's right here. Hackenberg was the last pocket passer. And he's saying scandal killed him. I'm saying he came in under uh, O'Brien, and then they brought in uh, uh, Franklin, and Franklin didn't coach that kid up, and he left after his first year with Franklin, and he never developed. I don't know what kind of scandal killed him. You know, I'm missing something there. Huh? Sandusky. Sandusky? No, nah, that's pre-Sandusky stuff with Hackenberg. Sure? Or even if it is, even if it is, I mean, Hackenberg had a had a good year under O'Brien. If you all remember correctly, he had a pretty good year under O'Brien. Next thing you know, they brought in Franklin, and Franklin didn't do nothing with them. He let him, he played them, but he let them just kind of waver out there till he had his own guy in there. Hey, a couple of baseball things, and then we'll. We'll get we'll get to the end of this show here because we've been having some good conversation for for episode one of season five, y'all. Yes, that's exactly one that I talk about. You know the Dodgers. And before I actually talk about this particular player right here, uh, uh, Yoshimbu Yamahato, um, I want to talk about all the money that the Dodgers spent this off season, you guys, between paying Otani, bringing in other other guys, then. Signing this guy, this Asian guy who had never pitched one inning, not one inning in Major League Baseball, they gave him $325 million. He got absolutely hammered in spring training, and I'm not exactly sure how he's doing at this point, but the Dodgers aren't running away with Major League Baseball at this point. Um, You know, this is a problem with Major League Baseball. Would you agree with me? Because they let a team like the Dodgers – Go ahead and have complete free reign, complete free reign of how they spend their money as long as as long as they can spend their money and, and pay the luxury tax. Man, you, you know, for a year where you could you guys are more money guys than me on that, but I can that's a lot, 700 million. But I at least understand why teams wanted to bank the break, excuse me, break the bank for Otani. You're getting two for one. I, so I see that. But Hashimoto, the pitcher, as you said, hadn't done anything. Not I, 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 Again, that's why I look at GMs in all sports and, you know, they'll make moves and people say, well, he knows what they're doing. I don't always see it that way. I don't get how you can justify paying a guy that much. And I, we might believe that you do everything. We've got you signed. We can always renegotiate. But how he draws that and without even pitching an inning in the M- MLB – I, I don't get it. I, I I don't get it. I don't I don't understand that. Just like I don't understand the NAI deal, how guys are tops in high school, and you want to give them big money before they've thrown a pass in college. I don't understand it. I, I yeah. don't. I, I don't get it. That's me though. Yeah, I understand. I understand. I just think baseball has completely lost its way. Hey, this kid's killing it still. Um, I I, I had uh, I had talked about Charlie Condon. I sent you guys some stuff on Charlie Condon. He's killing it, and he's a young kid. Um, he potentially could be the number one overall pick. He was hitting 517 after the first 25 games this season. That's just killing the ball in baseball. I, I mean, I, I'm excited to see what he does down the stretch. He's another George, Georgia guy. Uh, Georgia baseball is just at a whole nother level, and so is Georgia football. They're at a whole nother level, and I don't know what kind of NIL they're giving him, men, but whoo. You know, um, Smitty wanted to know this. He's like Big L Delia. I just hit dangers. Hey, Smitty wanted to know this. He wanted to talk about Caitlin Clark in the big three. He wanted to know if we're going to talk about it. So I sent my guys this. I sent him this little picture right here. If she goes to the WNBA, which she most likely will, and she's going to be the number one overall pick, she's going to make $76,000 in one year. In fact, LeBron James – LeBron James makes more in his salary than the entire, entire WNBA. Not just one team, the entire WNBA. But anyway, Clark was offered five million bucks. Who was that from, Sheen? I don't have it in front of me right now. Ice Cube. Ice Cube. Three. From Q. And then Master P came at her and said, I'll give you 10 million. Yeah, Master P has a team. He said, I'll give you 10 million to play for my team in the big three. 10 wow. million bucks. Well, I'm going to tell you something about this big three. It, it's a lot more physical than what goes on here. Uh, that's one. Two. Um, you got older, Bob. Yes. 
Yeah, she and you, I don't know if you guys remember Chris Jackson. He changed his name to uh, my Mark, Mark, he, he he plays that and and he shoots like better than all of them. She ain't better do do nothing with, with him. So I unless they're doing like a woman's type big three. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Let me ask you that. That's the thing. Let me ask you this. You're gonna. She'll be a draw. That, and that's what I was going at. Do you think guys they're offering this because it'll be a draw to make them more money? Because you have to know. She's going to get shut down in the big three because you don't, number one, you don't have that much room to run off of screens. Number two, those guys, six, five, six, six. They're Could she play the league chops? Huh? Could she play in the association? What association? The, you're talking about men's NBA. National Basketball Association. No, no, Could no. she play no, in the NBA? I mean, no disrespect to her because she can shoot the lights out just sh- just sitting there shooting. But when you're the little ball, three, it's the little ball too, Chops. Don't forget that. Yeah, true, true. And now you have guys that at that NFL level or any guy, they're, they're not going to take that. No, man, I don't think she can. I don't Look think at this shit. Can. I didn't know this. Smitty, is this legit, man? Are you all hung up on smoke from some fire you was putting out? Importantly, I believe that. So, I said believe he'd it. give her $15 million to play the Barstool intramural basketball. I'd be playing intramural basketball for $15 million bucks. They need me. I can, like, I can distribute the, the same game 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 game. I'm definitely not getting down in the paint anymore. I ain't big enough. I'm like five seven. That shit ain't happening. She can do whatever she wants because she can always go back to the WNBA a year later right. after she's made a grip. Yep. You know yep. what I mean? Regardless of what it is, I think. But no, there's there's cats that will. Fellas, she still needs to go to the WNBA and shine. Just being honest with you, you know what I mean? She still yeah. needs to do it there. There's, yeah. there's not gonna be, there's not gonna be 30 shots a game in the WNBA. No, no. So, what do you think she's going to do? Shoot 15 times? No, no. Take the money, then go, or just go straight to the NBA? Her dad's going to tell her to NBA. take the money. I don't think she'll take it. I don't think because Noob, I, I see you. Noob's waiting to chime in on this one. Uh, All right, take the is. money. Take the money. You have to. Hell yeah. You'll never have the opportunity ever again in your life. Hell yeah. Who's that? You, Who's that? Skinner? Take the money and run? Yeah, I don't know. I know it's all you're talking about. Yeah, take your money and run. So, so that that begs the question: Some of these guys get more in their NIL deal than their rookie contract. Why wouldn't they yes. stay? Why wouldn't they stay college for another year? Take the NIL. And that was go, that was go Marvin go. Harris. That was Marvin Harrison. Exactly. Tomorrow. Why wouldn't they do that? What would you What do you say about that? Hey, before we go into the home stretch here, I just got to ask you guys one more opinion. The kickoff rule has changed in the NFL. Where I'm going to start with Noobs. Hurt. Again, Noobs is a football guy here. I, I respect the shit out of him. Noobs, what do you think of the change of the football rule? I love it. I, I think it's going to uh, c- create more um, more excitement. They're, they're actually going to have a kickoff return. They, you know the guy from the Commanders? I don't I don't know if he had any kickoffs that weren't touchbacks for the entire yeah. season. It is boring to watch. And so it adds a special teams aspect back. It gives a guy that's a great kickoff returner, punt returner, you know, a guy like Mike Nelms back in the day, um, you know, any of the other guys you want to you know, talk about. It gives them an opportunity to play. I, I think it's a great idea, and it eliminates that high-speed collision. I'm telling you, every injury I had in college was from kickoff or kickoff return. Sheesh. Yeah, that's yeah, why. And honestly, was- fellas, but I, and I think there, but I think there's going to be a lot more returns, and I'm looking at it. Not equating it to as a breakdown, but trying to give you some perspective. When you're at the 40 yard line and it's fourth and inches, and everybody's up crowding the line, as soon as you break that line, you're gone. So I think we're going to see more return yards on that aspect. You know what I mean? I, I think one of the things I want to see them institute as well is that fourth down. If you go for it, it's automatically what fourth and fifteen or fourth and some shit. They they you know it's. They have a rule there that they have instituted for fourth downs, and uh, I'd love to see them incorporate that in the NFL. I, I really would. I, I mean, that changes – and part of that changes the punting game too, and I would yeah. love to see part of the punting – punting game sucks to me. They, they, fair catch. How many guys return punts for touchdowns anymore? I mean, you know, them dudes just kick it sky high. Guys get down, surround them. You know, I just – I know they want to push that out the door. Fellas, this has been fun, but let's let T Sis have his moment of moment of grace here. Go ahead, Sis. All right. Uh hey, and uh NCAA championship women's it's in it's in uh in play right now. Men's tomorrow. How about which coach has won the most NCAA tournament games? 
Had for some women? Most games? We'll say men. Oh. Most NCAA tournament games. Coach K. Krzyzewski. Yep. There you go. That's, that's what I was thinking would do. 90, 97. That might have been a softball there, but 97 games. I didn't think it would be that high. Hmm. With Duke? Yeah. And they got so many first round the n- number one seeds. Yeah. 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 Don't My God, all. I love your comment. You choice. <laughs> God says Dante Hall coming out of retirement. This you human joystick. Wow. Sheen, what do you got for us? Hey, what's your favorite pizza, gentlemen, from the grocery store? Oh, from the grocery store, huh? It's DiGiorno, not delivery. <laughs> I haven't even had a frozen pizza, so I couldn't even tell you. Never? Wow. How about not, that Red Baron? Red Baron's been so long. Boss, how you get three bucks and you ain't having a frozen pizza? The Man, little I, I, last time I probably had a frozen Excuse pizza, me. I still lived in Vandergrift. This oh, guy's ritzy. I didn't man. know he was ritzy, y'all. Y'all didn't tell me he was I'm going to check with Daisha on that. Dude, there's, a, there's a spot here. Their cats are from New York, and so you can buy it by the slice. Now, I'll get that off, man. Go in that joker. Oh, my the goodness. Hell? Look at this. <laughs> hey, he's whipping his cock out. What's going on? <laughs> no wonder she people on this visit. show. She gave up the visit. <laughs> I had to show her off. <laughs> Marshmallow. Oh, Are you trying Let's to say go. the Buffalo chicken pizza noobs? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> red. It's definitely Red Baron for me. You red like a Red Baron? That's My dad used to buy me these little square pizza slices. They came in twos like this in a square box, in a rectangular box. I think they were called Tito's. I, 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 I remember Tito's. Sean Man from back in the day. I used yeah. to like one. Oh, yeah, yeah. He came yeah. around like the ice cream truck. Hey, yeah. let me throw one out about my, my boy Vincent. Vincent absolutely hates breakfast food, y'all. He hates, he hates breakfast cakes. food. So when he was in about third grade, he had my wife. She used to buy these, these little wee pizzas. Probably, you know, probably about that big personal pan. That's what he had for breakfast every day. In third and fourth grade, he just wanted personal pan pizza. She'd go buy. They were a buck each. We get. Listen, I'm gonna have to bring. I'm gonna have to make him some of my million dollar bacon. Oh, then he might be all over that. But he might try and put that on some pizza. <laughs> it's twenty to nine. I was up, guys. I see you. Uh, yeah. well, listen, this has been a great first show. I'm sorry we didn't get together. We all we all gonna get together soon. Tops is going to join us in July. Yeah, We're going to have a ton of fun. Noobs is sitting on his deck right now. That's where we'll be in July, watching the fight, watching Tyson beat that punk ass's man. facing. Um, yeah, to bring it's going to be stick. fun as can be. So we're looking forward to all that. We may even have a second show that weekend with uh, with some MMA guys uh, locally out at uh, Il Forno because my guys want to do that too. They told me. Um, tell them where they can find you at. Let's start with Noobs. Where can they find you, Coach Noob? At Coach Noob on X, formerly known as Twitter and Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> Chops, where are you at? On the X, you can find me at The Real Big Chops. On the Gram, you can find me at Big Chop 79. And of course, on Facebook by my government name, Michael Gregory Mills, MGM. On the Gram, you talking Donnie Taylor? So you should push out them Grams. Go ahead, T says. <laughs> Uh, at, on the X and Instagram at one young Terry. <laughs> Sheen, we know we can find you everywhere, but tell us about it. Rasheen Hill on uh, uh, Facebook, Instagram. I'm uh, Rasheen Hill again. Yeah. Yes, sir. Hey, connect with us here on the original sports podcast with Mark Maraday and the Barbershop crew. You can find us on pod page at original sports you podcast with Mark Maraday. Like us on Facebook. You can also... Reach us on Snapchat, and you can find us on TikTok at OSP with Eminem or Original Sports Podcast. We're also on Instagram, which we try to push out as much as possible, and on YouTube. Don't forget to check out our TikToks. We have a Prospect a Day feature coming out. Uh, Chops has been pushing his out, and uh, I will be pushing mine out next. Noob's got me his, so we're waiting for Sis and Sheen to push theirs over to me so I can get those out to you. Uh, find us also on uh, Let's Talk Sports Network, sidelinesportsnet.com, and Elite 
Sports and Entertainment Network. Uh, we're on Tuesday nights on their Roku TV station at from 9 to 10. Uh, feel free to comment on our show, question what we have going on, or give us a shout out. Uh, maybe even suggest a guest to come along with us at original sports podcast at gmail.com. Uh, shout out to my guy, Steve Mendley, for doing the new season's voice intro and outro. Uh, Charlie Hodgson for continuing to do our message, uh, our music. We'll have Charlie on the show to play a little music. I swear we are. News, I'd like to get Chuck to come on with us. Uh, join us on Tuesday night this week to experience the O on the original sports podcast. Thank you all. See you soon. Later.